Hello and welcome, good afternoon, to all of our Harris County Adult Aquatics Program participants. We have really missed having you come out to class. We've missed seeing your faces and we know that you missed staying active. When we reached out to everyone, the main thing that we heard was that you're starting to get sore, your muscles are a little stiff, and it's just plain boring at home. So what we've done is with the permission of Commissioner Rodney Ellis under his direction, we have provided you guys with a at home workout. So what I have is a series of exercises. It's gonna to be total body, upper body, lower body, and core stabilization that you can do from the comfort of your own home. And as you know, we can't come into the office. So I am filming from my living room. So this is my small studio, as you can see. It's my living room and I also want you to feel comfortable doing these exercises at home by yourself. This is not going to be a traditional aerobics video where we do the exercises together at the same time. I'm gonna go through all of the exercises, explain how to do them correctly, what modifications you can use if you have bad knees, bad back, back ankles, whatever the case may be. I want you to feel successful by the end of the workout. What you'll have to do is start and stop the video whenever you're ready to move on to the next exercise. So again, this is not a video that you'll play all the way through at one time. I'm gonna give an example of the exercise, give alternative options, tell you how many times you should do that, at which point you should pause your video, finish the exercises, come back to the video, and I'll explain the second exercise. I hope that this format works for you. Of course, this is all brand new, so we're practicing and trying to find the solutions that'll work best for everybody. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. There's a couple of items that I am using. Um, I'm gonna use small hand weights during the workout. You can always use a water bottle or two water bottles. And if you don't have a water bottle on hand, no big deal. You can use a piece of um, two cans of um, vegetables. If you've got like canned beans, sometimes I'll use those in my workouts. Anything really that's gonna offer you resistance to just get your heart rate up a little bit and get a little bit of resistance training, which will help you keep your bone density. That's the main thing. Um, as we age without resistance training, our bone density tends to decrease. So we want to keep active as much as possible, not just for the cardiovascular um, health benefits that we get from it, but also from a bone density and to protect your joints from any injuries that you may have um, just out in the normal day. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited. This is all brand new for everybody. So let's get started. Okay. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just a very, very simple warm up. I want you to just go ahead and march in place. Oh, and as you can see, I have a chair here. This is gonna be um, to help with balance. At any point, you can use your chair during the workout if you notice that um, your balance is off a little bit or maybe you don't have enough strength to stand on one leg. I want you to use this chair at any point that you see comfortable. And then when we get through the exercises, I will start to reach over and I'll let you know this is an option for you if you need to use the chair. So just stay tuned. I want this to be an exercise um, system that can work for everybody no matter what your limitations are. Um, and if you have any questions, I hope that you let us know. All right, so we're gonna start just marching in place and you can just march in place, I'd say for about 30 seconds or so. We really just wanna kinda of loosen up your joints just a bit. We wanna get the blood flowing through your body. Um, start to pick up a little bit of heavy breathing, just get the heart rate elevated just a bit. We're not looking for anything strenuous. We don't need to run in place, but just marching in place. And then as you take a deep inhale, I want you to lift those hands up towards the sky. And as you exhale, you're gonna exhale and bring your hands back down by your side. So we're gonna do that probably about eight times. Just a deep inhale and exhale. Hands come down. March it in place. Again, let's just keep this going. In between, you can do a big breath and then march in place for about 10, 20 times and then another deep inhale and bring it back down, back into marching. Just opening up the lungs. As we know with this virus, the more you can use those lungs, the stronger they are, um, the more conducive it is to fighting off um, any illnesses that come your way. I mean, of course it doesn't prevent an illness, but it does help with your lung strength to be able to battle whatever comes your way. So next we're gonna go into cat-cow. Cat-cow can be done on the ground or standing. This is one of my favorite exercises because it wakes up your entire spine and it loosens up your vertebrae to keep you from having a really stiff back. Maybe you have a stiff neck. This is something that you can work with. I'm gonna first do it standing and then I'll demo it on my knees. So big deal, your cat, if you think about a cat that's arching its back, 
this is that movement that you're going to want to do for the cat. And then for the cow, the cows usually have that sway back. So on the cow movement, if you're standing, I would just want you to take your hands back and then forward, arching the back and rounding the back. And again, it's opening up your chest, opening up your lungs, waking up your spine. Now, this is a great exercise for turning on your central nervous system, but the main, the biggest deal is that I want you to be concerned with is if you have any slipped disc or any bulging discs, this is not a position for you. I would want you to stick with coming back and then standing forward, coming back, and then standing forward. If you do not have any slipped discs, then this is a safe position for you. Come forward, and then come backwards. Come forward, and then come backwards. And we're gonna do that about 10 times. I would say cat and cow, that completes one rep, and we're gonna do that 10 times. If you're doing it on the floor, and you're comfortable getting on your hands and knees, you're gonna do that same movement. Arch your back. Now, when you arch your back, you want to tuck your chin into your chest. And when you round your back, you're going to pick your chin up towards the sky. Again, either option is acceptable. It's just up to your comfort level. Some people don't like having their knees on the ground. Maybe that's too painful to get up and down. You do whatever option works best for you. The third exercise that you're going to do, we're going to do an overhead reach. And we're going to go to the side. You want to keep your belly button pointed straight ahead. Both of your hip bones are pointed straight ahead. And you're just reaching over and come back into central. Hands go up, over, and just try to reach your fingertips as far as they'll go. You want to try to get your hip, so the opposite side, and your fingertips as far away from each other as you can, creating as much space in your side. If your hip or your lower back is bothering you from sitting all day, that's probably a really great stretch and you'll feel it immediately right along your obliques above your hips. Your obliques wrap around and they tie in right into the back. So as your hips get tighter from sitting, it's gonna pull on that lower back a little bit more and a little bit more and you may feel some discomfort if you're stuck at home. So let's try to stretch that out as much as possible. You can also lean into a wall. If you wanna hold onto your chair, you can totally hold onto your chair just to give you a little bit of stability while you reach. We're gonna go about four times on the right and four times on the left, just alternating sides. Next exercise, pretty simple. We're going arm circles. I know that you guys are familiar with it. We've done it in class. I know that Mike's done it in the class a lot. You're just going 10 forward, and then you're gonna go 10 in reverse, and then you're gonna go 10 all the way up and all the way down. All the way up and all the way down. Again, just 10, 10, and 10. Next, we're gonna go hip circles. With your legs standing apart, both hands on your hips. I want you to think about making a hula hoop with your hip. If you were to take your hip bones and draw a hula hoop with your hips, that's the movement we're gonna do. Just taking those hips all the way back around and all the way forward. Really loosening up the joint where your leg meets into your hip. So we're going probably, let's say about eight circles to the right, and then you're gonna go eight circles to the left. I want you to pay attention if there's one side that maybe doesn't quite make itself around all the way to a circle, no big deal. Maybe you get to the right side and your hip pops backwards. Listen to your body. Stop where it needs to stop. You don't have to force your body to do anything. It knows what it's doing. So if it's just nice and slow, the more you do it, the more mobility you'll have in your hip, the more comfortable you'll be. Just in case um, you've got any old injuries in that hip, we just want to loosen it up safely and slowly. Next thing you're going to do, take your chair. This is uh, my daughter's high chair, so it's a little bit higher than a normal chair. But you're going to sit into this chair, and I want you to just nice and slow, bring that knee into your chest and relax. Bring the knee into your chest and relax. If you can't reach your knee, no big deal. I want you to just lift it and come back down. Lift it and come back down, focusing on keeping your belly button pulled in against your spine. That's gonna brace your core and protect your lower back. You go as high as is comfortable for your body. We're stretching out your glutes, warming up the front of your hip, and warming up your core. For this one, you probably only need to go about four times each side, and you hold it as long as you need to or as long as you can. Completely up to you. 
The last thing that we're gonna do for this warm up, just the joint by joint warm up, so we started at the top of our body and worked our way down, we're gonna go what I call a heel toe rock. You can do this sitting, and I'll also demo it standing. You're gonna take your heels, press them into the ground, and you can do it one foot at a time, and I want you to just slowly make contact all the way to your tippy toes. So you're gonna roll forward and backward, just taking that ankle through a full range of motion. The more movement you have, the more mobility in your ankles or in any of your joints really, the better it is for the longevity of that because that means that there's blood flow going to the entire joint, there's lubrication going into the entire joint, which means that there's healing happening. Anytime you have increased circulation, your blood's taking nutrients into that particular area. So we wanna to try to get blood flow into every joint that we can just for the health of it. If you wanna stand up, you can stand up and do that same thing. I'm gonna rock backwards and come onto the tippy toes. Rock backwards onto my heel, pulling my toes up towards the sky and then rock forward. Again, that's the option for if you're standing versus if you're sitting. Both of those are, um, pretty awesome so don't worry about you know one being more important than the other whatever is comfortable for your body I want you to do that all right we're gonna go into our lower body movements those were just warm up joint by joint starting with upper body going down to the lower body now remember you go as fast or as slow as you need to this isn't a traditional aerobics class this is more circulation mobility and a little bit of strength some days or some videos that we send out may be aerobics based but today I just want to get you up moving at a pace that's comfortable for you. Okay, so starting with our first lower body exercise, I'm gonna take my chair for balance. Now you can do uh, one of three options that I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna start with the hardest option and then work my way down to the easiest option. So if you um, see me starting this demonstration and you think that exercise is not for me, no big deal, just hang tight and I'll get you an option that works for you. So starting with one hand on the chair, I want you to take your legs just about shoulder width apart. There's a slight bend in your knee, meaning that there's no, your knees are not locked out. We don't want you to stand in this position, just a slight bend in the knee and a slight bend in the hip. That means that your body is ready to move without uh, tripping or falling. It's kind of braced for impact. So squeeze that core in nice and tight. You're gonna pull one knee up. You're working on balance and stability in this position. Work and pull that knee up. You're gonna step out and then give a nice squat and then come back in. Bring that knee up, take the leg out, go into a nice low squat and bring it back in. Your second option for that, if that maybe that's a little bit too much balance, um, you're not really sure about how stable you're gonna be, no big deal, you're gonna bring that knee in, bring it back down, step out and then squat. Step it together, bring that knee up, step down, step out, squat, bring it back together. Again, if this option doesn't work for you, no big deal, I've got another option for you. You're gonna bring that knee up, step down, step out, come together. Bring that knee up, step down, step out, bring it together. Don't worry about how high you lift that leg. I really want you to just work on picking it up off the ground so that we're working a little bit of ankle stability and balance and you're also using your core. Up, down, together, back up, down, together, back, up, down, together, excuse me, squat, up, down, out, squat, up, and out, up, and out. Either one of those three options will work for you. I want you to try to focus on getting about maybe let's say 20 on the right and 20 on the left. When I'm going out to my right side, I'm gonna hold on to the chair on my left side and vice versa. If I'm gonna step out to my left side, I'm gonna use the balance of the chair on the right side. Second exercise is really important for the back side of your body. We know for a fact that anytime that we work your glutes, the healthier your lower back is going to be because your glutes are what keep you standing upright. If you notice that as you get a little bit older, you tend to lean a little bit more forward. That's because we've got usually a weaker back, weaker glutes, and our hips are really tight from sitting. So anytime that we can strengthen up those glutes, that's gonna help us stand a little bit taller and bringing those hips forward into a steady, safe position for the lower back. So with that being said, I want you to hold on to the back of a chair. I don't want you to lean over the chair. I want you to stay up. Try not to rock your body back and forth in order to get this movement. It's a very small movement. You're gonna basically kick that heel straight back. 
I'm not going to the side, I'm not crossing over, and I'm not twisting my body. Hands pointed straight ahead, hips pointed straight ahead, eyes looking straight ahead. So you're just gonna kick that heel back, and we're gonna go 20 times on the right, and 20 times on the left. Again, I'm not leaning over in order to get that leg up. So if you notice that you feel this movement in your lower back, I want you to make a smaller movement. That means that your glutes are not squeezing the way that they should in order to get the work done. So if this is too high a movement and you feel a pinch in your lower back, bring that leg back down and you're just gonna do a tiny movement, back and forward, back and forward. Every time you go back, really squeezing that glute right behind you. So that's 20 on the right, 20 on the left, and that should give you 40 total. Your third exercise for the lower body is really an agility option. This is, when I say agility, I don't mean that you're going out to be a football player, but we, what we are working on is accuracy with your feet. We know that the stronger your core is and the better um, hand-eye coordination you have as far as where your feet are placing, what messages your, um, your mind is sending to your legs and how your legs are responding, if we can get you to step a little quicker and with a little bit more accuracy, we can try to prevent some injuries or at least mitigate some injuries with um, missteps. Sometimes we miss a curb or we may miss the bottom step. So if we really pay attention to it and work on agility, those are um, ways that we can try to mitigate the injury. So I'm using an agility circle. Um, some people could use a hula hoop if, you're, if you um, feel comfortable with it. You can use um, the tile. I've got tile in my kitchen, so I would use the tile grout um, in the little tile squares. But whatever you choose, just make sure that you're comfortable stepping over it. You don't wanna step on top of it. That's the goal, is to step over. So with the circle, I'm going in and back out. I'm going in and back out. It may be a little bit difficult to see because I do have a colored carpet, um, but I'm going in the circle and back out the circle. That would count as one, and I'm going for 30. And then I'm gonna turn to the right, and I'm gonna step in with the left and back out. In and back out for 30. Switch to the other side. I'm going in and back out, in and back out. Keeping the core pulled in nice and tight. Again, in and back out. You can go as fast or as slow as you need. Again, working on accuracy, which means you're working on putting your foot exactly where you picture it. Sometimes our brain may send a message to our muscles and they don't quite respond and you may step on the line or you may miss your target. So go slow if you need to in order to hit your target and go for accuracy. We're not just moving our legs, we're making a mind and muscle connection. If you wanna go faster for cardiovascular, it's just in and back out, in and back out for 30, 30 forward, 30 on the left hip, 30 on the right hip. And now we're gonna move on to upper body. For upper body, I have a set of dumbbells. You, if you have hand weights, you can totally use your hand weights. I have a set of eight pound dumbbells right here that I could use. I just happen to have some dumbbells at home. If you don't have dumbbells, no big deal. Don't go out and buy any. You can also use two canned goods. If you happen to have some baked beans maybe in the cup cupboard, go ahead and pull it out, bring it out, and you can use those in place of dumbbells. You can also use two water bottles. Maybe you have just two um, 16 ounce water bottles. Take one in each hand, and you can use those as resistance training. With resistance training, again, we wanna work on maintaining your bone density. We know as we age, we start to lose bone density, so the resistance training becomes even more important. It doesn't matter how heavy the weight, as long as there's some type of resistance. So I'm gonna use my eight pound dumbbells. You use what you have. I'm gonna take these dumbbells to the side. I want you to keep in mind, when your dumbbells are up to the side, that your wrist is right over your elbow. I don't want your arm all the way in, meaning that you have a little chicken wing elbow that's hanging out. And I also don't want your arm all the way over here because that's just a little bit too much strain on the shoulder. So keep your shoulder, shoulder in line with your elbow, elbow in line with your wrist, and we're gonna press up and back down. As the arm goes up, exhale. As the arm comes back down, I want you to inhale. And you have 15 on the right and 15 on the left. I want you to work on not rocking. 
We don't need to rock with this exercise. Because we have some type of resistance, we wanna focus on pulling that core in, being nice and safe. I don't want you to rock forward or backward, and I don't want you to arch your back in order to get that weight up. Chest stays pointed straight ahead, belly button in tight, and we're just going up and down for 15. The second exercise we have is what I call an around the world. This is, um, we're working some tiny muscles, so the lighter the weight, the better it is, no big deal. You're gonna take those dumbbells, palms are facing out. Again, legs are standing about hip distance apart. You're gonna take those dumbbells out and around. You're going up to the sky and bring it back down. Up to the sky and bring it back down. I'm gonna turn sideways so that you can see I'm not arching my back or rounding my shoulders in order to get the dumbbells up. Only thing that should be moving is your arms. As your arms go up, I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. Focus on that, that's working your posture muscles. That way we work your upper back as well as your shoulders. Squeeze those shoulder blades and bring it back down. Squeeze those shoulder blades and bring it back down. You have 15 total for this exercise. Shoulders and upper back, it's a piece of cake. Now, you can go ahead and set those dumbbells down. If you have your cans, set them to the side. If you have your water bottles, set them to the side. Next, we're gonna go modified jumping jack. I hear you through the computer. Don't worry, you do not have to jump. We have different options for success. Again, I'm gonna give you two different options. Your first option, of course, if you feel fancy, you can go into a jumping jack. You have 100 of those. If you are not a fan of 100 jumping jacks, no big deal. You can still be active. What's gonna happen is you're gonna take one leg out. As the hands go up, step out. As the hands come back down, you're gonna step back in. And you're just gonna alternate what side you go to. That's one, two, three, four. You're gonna to try to keep the hips right over the leg that's planted, meaning you don't wanna to lean to the side when you step. You just wanna step out and bring it back together. Step out and bring it back together. Keeping the core tight, working on your balance, working on your stability with standing on one foot. That sometimes in itself is a workout. So if you don't wanna take those hands up, you just tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. So that's three different exercises for your upper body cardiovascular move. Again, you're going for 100. 100 jumping jacks, 100 step outs, or 100 lower body only tap, 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 tap. I want you to involve some type of upper body and lower body at the same time when you get your cardiovascular movements because anytime we can get them both working at the same time, we're gonna tax that cardiovascular system, which means it's gonna get a better workout for your heart and for your lungs, which is what we're looking for. Now, your third set, we're gonna go for core balance. This is really important, especially as we get older, to work on our core along with the agility. I know that I mentioned the agility. We wanna to try to mitigate the opportunities that you have for falling. So when you're working on your core, this is what stops you from tripping. If you happen to stub your toe, it's what keeps you from falling all the way to the ground. If you have a nice strong core, it should be able to catch you and get you at least to a safe position without hurting your back or without throwing out your hip or falling on the ground and maybe hurting your knees or your wrists. So, for this position, I am gonna use one of my dumbbells. You're going to take a dumbbell. You can use your water bottle. You can use your um, can of beans if you have it. Maybe it's a can of peaches. Whatever you have in the cabinet, I would say go ahead and use it. You're gonna stand nice and tall, arms are straight out, and you're just gonna rotate and bring it back into center. What you're working on is keeping your hips pointed straight ahead. I don't want your whole body to move. I just want your upper body, your chest, and your arms. You're gonna move it as far as you feel comfortable, come right back into center. As far as you feel comfortable, come into center. You don't need to over rotate that body. The further the rotation, a little bit more strain on the lower back. So even if you just go to 45 degrees and come back, that's perfectly safe, as long as you're squeezing your belly nice and tight, okay? We don't want to um, have a very loose belly while we're doing this movement. No matter what, I promise you have muscles in your body that are still functioning, so I want you to squeeze it. And just imagine what it would look like if your muscles squeezed, and that alone will initiate 
the contraction in your, in your muscles. That'll send the message. So it's out and back in, out and back in. Nice, slow, and controlled. We don't need to rush this movement again because it involves rotating your lower back. We don't need to go fast. So with that being said, you have 20 to the right and you have 20 to the left. That comes out to 40 total. Your last and final exercise is called a bow extension. This is really gonna challenge your balance. I would say if you wanna try it with no weights first, try it with no weights before you add anything um, extra. I'm gonna use the chair for this one. Legs are apart. I'm gonna take my left arm overhead. I'm gonna bring my knee and stretch. Crunch and stretch. Crunch and stretch. When you crunch, think about folding your belly button in half rather than poking it out, okay? You have 20 on the right. Maybe again, you leave the dumbbell out of it and it's just here and crunch. That's still a great workout. On this one, I'm taking my legs out a little bit wider than the other exercise here and back out. If you don't wanna lift your knee, you can take that dumbbell, bring it to your hip and squeeze. That's still an exercise. It still works your core. Dumbbell goes up, bring it to the hip. As you bring it to the hip though, you gotta squeeze really tight, otherwise it's not really working anything. And then take it up and squeeze. Then you'll switch sides, 20 per side. So those are our exercises that I have for you. Again, they're pretty simple movements. We're not looking for anything that's gonna just really skyrocket the system because we know you've been at home for several weeks now. We wanna get you up, get you active, try to provide value, and then also please be mindful that this is our first video. So we're gonna learn as we go, and as we continue to push out videos for you to be at home, we'll start to get a little bit uh, more adventurous with the movements that we're making, and then also try to make sure that it's in a format that works for everybody, that's helpful, and that um, I can do for my living room, because that's what we have to work out. Thank you so much for your support. We really miss you, and we can't wait to have you back in class. Have a great day.